What do we study here? The, the way, way of the flood, sir. sir. And what is that way? Time to pass, sir. No mercy, sir. I can't hear you. Time to pass, church shit. No mercy, sir. Flurf perspective. Flurf perspective. Flurf perspective. And if you would, please like, comment, and subscribe. In today's video, I am going to be very open about myself, which is probably against my better judgement, knowing how people just love to have things to beat you with. They love knowledge and personal information to mock you and so forth. But you know what? I really don't care about them. I came back for a reason, and that's to help other people get out of the flat earth and to regain their lives. So if doing so, if exposing myself means that I have to talk about myself in a very open and candid way, then so be it. This is a price worth paying. A lot of you have been asking about how could I have been sucked into the Flat Earth conspiracy? And I think the best way to find out is to analyze events from 2010 to present. Well, actually, no, let's go further back and I will tell you about my education. I always understood at school, but I was essentially lazy and uninterested in it. I had so much going on in my life at that age. We might have been very poor in terms of possessions, but my mum always made sure I could attend out of school activities and groups. I was in the Cubs, getting all the awards. I still have my little jumper somewhere with the badges on. I attended Scouts for about four years. I attended the Air Training Corps for six years. I did Taekwondo from the age of 6 to 17, and I did four years at the Blackpool Boys Boxing Club. So most evenings I would have something to do, and I also loved sports, track and field, and was representing my school from the 100 metres right up to the cross-country distance. I also did long jump and the javelin, and I got my black belt second dan in Taekwondo. When I was not doing all of these things, I was hanging out with my granddad, who was also one of Jehovah's Witnesses. Now there is a difference between a Jehovah's Witness and one of Jehovah's Witnesses. One understands the religion and one does not. From the age of five, my granddad would encourage me to read with him, the Awake and Watchtower magazines. And they were easy reading, full of pretty pictures, a bit like the perfect family, perfect community. Then we would start reading the Bible. Over time, he started taking me to the Kingdom Hall and then to Bible studies and then to big conventions. In time, I considered myself to be one of Jehovah's Witnesses too. And over the years, I probably read the Bible back to front at least six times, was a regular reader at Bible studies and would stand up at the Kingdom Hall and present readings and context to passages of the Bible in front of hundreds of people. I was also introduced to a girl. Well, we actually grew up together there. And pretty much it was known that we were being groomed to be husband and wife. And to be honest, she was a bloody stunner. Hell McPherson lookalike. And it was like all my wishes had come true. And there we have it. My childhood. Two separate parts of me that never overlapped. I kept religion and my hobbies separate. And I had so much going on in my life that, quite honestly, an education was a very distant third on my priorities list. In The Witnesses, you are expected to canvas door to door and to bring the truth to community. So being flexible with your job was also important. If you look at how The Witnesses are now, those of working age, I would expect almost all of them to either have part-time jobs or to be self-employed for this exact reason they need to be available for Jehovah's work. So, when I wasn't reading the Bible for two hours a day, attending the Kingdom Hall or Bible study, when I wasn't preparing readings, when I wasn't attending the air training corps and flying bulldogs, gliders, chipmunks, etc. When I wasn't at the scouts or kicking the head off my mates with roundhouses or in the present kicks. When I wasn't boxing the head off people in the gym or running for my school, I had time to do some homework. But guess what? My homework rarely got done. My results at GCSE level were 
an amusing story actually. Uh, back then, the results were posted on the wall of the foyer at the school, and I found my name on the wall, then looked across at the results. It was set out in a grid formation, and I read A, 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 B, A, 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 B, A, and I was like, yeah, smashed it. I knew the stuff was a piece of cake anyway, and as I said, I didn't really try. Uh, the coursework, etc., I would knock together the evening before the due date, and I would re revise just one day before the exam. I really didn't feel I needed to put any more effort in than that. So I walked away and was inwardly smirking to myself. Smashed it, I did. Then I thought, let me go and double check and see what grades matched what subjects. Except this time, when I looked across, the grades seemed different. E, F, 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 F. I was like... What the fuck? Um, turns out uh, another lad in my year with the same surname as me was the one with the excellent grades. And I was the one who, yeah, I flunked everything. I was devastated and shocked, quite honestly. I really was. Anyway, I enrolled in sixth form college the next semester and resat six GCSEs over the next year. This time I put a little more effort into it and I smashed all six, passing in maths, English, business studies, religious education, chemistry, and history. A lot changed for me when I was 17, though. I had an accident at the air training corps on the sports field. I ran to catch a ball playing cricket, and so did someone else, who was quite a bit bulkier than me. We ended up colliding in the field, and I fractured my knee in three places and broke two of my ribs. It was a total freak accident that effectively ended my sports activities. I never returned to the air training corps or to taekwondo as they were two activities I was still doing back then. My competitive running was also over. Then, not long after this, my grandfather died in front of me, suddenly from a heart attack. It was such a shock and actually I lost my mind for about a year over this. He was, to all intents and purposes, my closest relative, my mentor, and his death sent me spiralling headfirst into the witnesses. I was in line soon enough to be made an elder at the congregation, kind of the perfect example of someone devoted to his religion. I was going to be baptised, then I could start dating my wife-to-be, and yet with my fragile mental state, which was all over the place. I had lost so much in such a short space of time and had replaced it with religion. One day I was reading the Watchtower magazine and I could see fire and brimstone wiping out humanity whilst the 144,000 watched on. I remember back to the 1,000 years of trying to attain everlasting life here on earth and then I thought to myself, is this what I really want? Is this what my life will be? To watch everyone I know die in fire whilst I live only to live on for eternity as a human here on earth. This kind of broke the spell for me when I actually realised that what I was trying to attain, real or not, would actually be a life sentence. Doomed to walk on earth forevermore, never dying, seeing the same people, the same animals. And I thought, screw that. For all that marrying the hottest chick you could ever imagine would have been a very easy compromise to make, it was not enough for me to give up the rest of my life to that religion. And so around the age of 19, I left the congregation never to return. So anyway, we were talking 2010 to present. So in 2010, I decided to undertake a degree at university. Little did I know how useless <laughs> I was initially on that course. I undertook a degree in media design, computer coding and language, working with 3D software, 3DS Max, all the Adobe suite basically, working with 2D graphics, making apps for mobile phones, creating CG animations and much more. But here I was, a mature student, accepted on the course because I was over 25 years of age and taking this on when I did not own a PC. I didn't even know how to create a file. I did not know how to save a file or even to open an application. 
it was an utter embarrassment. But I was not going to fail at this, so I asked the much younger people in the class who had all been brought up with PCs and had used the software before, hey, how do I do this or how do I do that? And yeah, they helped out, surprisingly. And I got the hang of things, the basics, basically, pretty quickly. And then the hard stuff started. But I would not be beaten. I wanted to prove something to myself that I could do this. And after two years, I got my foundation degree in interactive media development. The top up year was simply called media design. And completing that would gain me my full honours degree. I remember handing in my dissertation, sitting back. A couple of months later, my full honours degree was completed and I finished three hard years of study that I never thought I would finish. Anyway, the course also taught me how to make and produce videos, how to edit them and all the file formats, etc. Part of that course meant that I had to make a YouTube channel and upload content there in order to pass. Now, I have never used YouTube in my entire life, but after creating an account, and by this time having a PC and internet at home, I started to watch some of the videos. At that time, there was a lot of videos about the events back in 2001 and the Twin Towers conspiracies, and what actually happened on 9-11. These were everywhere. And when you watched one video, suddenly there were a plethora of others recommended to you. Then YouTube would start offering you other things to watch, like chemtrail conspiracies. And I was like, yeah, I've seen those big boys coming out of the back of an airplane. Oh, right, they are poisoning us with them, are they? Right, okay. And the conspiracies kept coming. And I would binge watch hundreds of videos a week, drinking it all in, absorbing it. It became an addiction, and the feeling that we were all being lied to tied everything together. The YouTube algorithm didn't promote alternative videos that I was seeing, so we only got one side of the story, the conspiracy side. Suddenly, there were content creators with hundreds of thousands of views on every video, thousands of comments from people agreeing with them. It was out of control. I would turn on YouTube and instead of the landing page being full of cuddly dog videos, it was the latest conspiracy, including Flat Earth. Now, even though I was fully immersed in these conspiracies, the part of my brain that still remained somewhat sane refused to even consider that that is even possible. I would pass over those recommendations, preferring to watch or even re-watch videos that I'd seen previously and to click even such a ridiculous claim just didn't appeal to me one bit. But eventually, after being hounded by this one recommendation over and over, I took the step and I clicked it. 200 Proofs by Eric Dubé. The stage was set, my brain having already been pre-exposed to ever more insane conspiracies, finally landed on a video that when you're in that mindset, was right to be influenced. And influenced I was. I watched another and another, and I was so fascinated by this idea, the granddaddy of all conspiracies, that I had to investigate for myself. I could do that. I live near the ocean. I could buy a camera and go see for myself. The maths was easy enough. Go and see for myself. And I did. My first video funnily enough, was from Southport, and funnily enough, was from the Velvet Trail, the same place that actually an image was taken from that returned me to the globe. Anyway, I filmed Blackpool Tower, but the mountains behind were not visible. But here I was, looking at Blackpool, seeing it all. The problem was my elevation. I had never considered that in my calculations. So I put a video out saying, Flat Earth, Black Hole from Southport. It should have been seen on a globe anyway, and I was pointed that out on the video by some globe believers who had been arguing with a certain sleeping warrior. He at that time had been engaged in a war with several people over some footage he shot of Black Hole Tower, and they were all on the prowl for someone who made a video about that location. 
I noticed a video pop up in my feed with the channel name attached and someone claiming, do I have a fan? So I watched the video and it was some dude claiming that I was a troll. As the video went on, this dude was like, oh, maybe I got this wrong. Maybe he's a flat earther. Eventually, he concedes on his own video that actually his initial belief that I was a troll was wrong. And actually, no, I'm no longer a troll. And he said in his video, oh, I'll try and reach out to this guy. Turns out that the video was made by Sleeping Warrior. And he did indeed reach out to me, wanting me to go with him to Hoy Lake and film Blackpool from there, as he was sure that we could see it. So I agreed to meet him. We filmed Blackpool Tower from there and saw far more than we should have done if we were living on the globe. And that was it. I was all in then. Not only did I have proof of flat earth, I now had an ally, someone who messaged me every hour of every day, who was the guy who encouraged me to get Skype, who introduced me to other flat earthers. Suddenly I felt I was achieving something. I was exposing the elite. I was changing humanity for the better. I was exposing the elites by exposing flat earth. I could make a difference. I could stop these other conspiracies, the chemtrails, Nibiru, 9-11, by helping to bring down the corrupt regime. Finally, my years of conspiracy delving was about to pay off and I could spearhead this revolution and make the world a better place for everyone. And I think that that will do for this video. I think I've said enough. Something for you to chew on. So, I think we'll end it there, and I'll see you all in the next one.